Now, back in the 70s, a small record shop was the hub of the Belfast alternative music scene, bringing together people from every part of the turbulent city. A feature film about Terry Hooley, the man behind his success, is proven to be a big hit. Andy Kershaw caught up with Terry just as the shop was about to reopen. When it comes to punk, New York has the haircuts, London has the trousers, but Belfast has the reason! Nineteen seventy six, one of the most violent periods of Northern Ireland's troubles, and it made Belfast a terrifying place, divided by religion and politics. A veteran hippie called Terry Hooley decided bravely, some might say recklessly, to open a small record store. And he did it here on Great Victoria Street, which at the time was known as Bomb Alley. And he called the shop Good Vibrations. Hey, how are you? Its name, Good Vibrations, wasn't a reference to the Beach Boys, but instead a nod to the aftershocks of the Belfast bombs. What did the shop mean, do you think, to Belfast people when you opened it back then? I just wanted to, to let the world know there was more going on in Belfast than just bombs and bullets. In Belfast, the punk scene exploded onto the streets. It didn't matter whether you were Republican or Loyalist, Catholic or Protestant, whether you had green, orange or purple hair, as long as you were a music fan, it was fine. On the 12th of January 1978, Terry was persuaded to visit the Heart Bar to see a new band called Rudy. But how different would music have been in Belfast without Terry Hooley? Terry didn't laugh at the bands, he took them seriously and he could see the potential there. We never dreamt we could put a record out and Terry put out Big Time. Which As was a the single. First, yeah, which was the first record in Good Vibrations. Once Big Time was out, everyone thought, well, if they can do it, we can do it. The Northern Irish punk precedent had been set and Terry signed another new band, the Bash Street Kids of Rock and Roll, The Undertones. Tell us what this building represents. Adam Eaton for Terry, who had never been here, to record the uh, Teenage Six EP. Summer 1978, and we released it then in September 1978. What was uh, your memory of that day? We did, uh, we did the recording, and Terry came in with fish and chips and lemonade, and that's <laughs> my only kind of memory of it. <laughs> Do you realise it was something very special? I didn't realise it was very special, it was just a good opportunity to make a record. What was the reaction from the media, from the uh, music industry? What kind of response well, did we went you over get? to London and Jeff and Richard from Rough Trade told me that Teenage Kicks was the worst record they ever heard. <laughs> I was devastated. It's what a treat. So Terry, you then dropped a few copies off the Teenage Kicks yes. EP round at Radio 1. Uh, for the great man. Yeah. And I think it was a Monday night, uh, he played the record and we were so delighted. But then, unbelievably, he played it for the second time and we just couldn't believe it. Terry, being a music fan and a terrible businessman, sold Teenage Kicks for just £500 and a signed photo of the Shangri-Las. Over the years, the Good Vibration shop has shut down a staggering ten times. And now Good Vibrations is about to open its doors once again. For the eleventh time. <laughs> At the age of sixty-four, Terry's passion for music is as strong as ever. People are really, really proud of what, what the label did in the shop, and everybody's got a story to tell about. Uh, some people even met their wives in the record shop and got married. <laughs> Good Vibrations is not a record shop. It's not a record label. It's a way of life. It's a way of life that's going to kill me, or it's a way of life that's going to keep me alive. And it looks like music in Belfast will be alive and kicking, as long as Terry Hooley's still with us. What a legend Terry is, isn't it? Brilliant. 11 years. Good luck, good luck.